The United States Navy, Special Operations Disclosure on Technologies and Applications Being Used Against American Targeted Individuals First, all 315 million Americans are targeted individuals. They are in an electromagnetic concentration camp, under unbreakable electronic mind control. There is a secret military police structure that silently controls much of America, especially in regards to current and future plans regarding population culling and management. On the lowest level are actual police and soldiers. As I was told, everyone who carries a holster and a badge is directly under our control. It is all under NORTHCOM. Navy elements and private black ops security firms are used for much of it, especially the dirty work. It is all done by neural frequency weapons slash systems running on the now thoroughly complete atmospheric topologies of HARP, ELF waves etc. with nanobots from chemtrails slash aerosols in and around the subject, S. In the bigger picture, Americans, and the global population, are being buried alive in a frequency fence. Even the tiny handful of people who have had exposure to mind control, for example insiders themselves, or most targeted individuals, have no idea how fantastically advanced, subtle and powerful the current system really is. It is beyond words. Anybody can be taken over within seconds and be totally remote controlled without knowing it. It is beyond the capacity of those who haven't experienced this being done to themselves and others around them to even comprehend this. All Americans are computers. It takes an average of approximately five minutes to access any American and remote control them. The same apparently applies to Europeans and likely, potentially, most of the world. It can all be seen like a computer network where the human, brain and every single cell of the body, is the computer, and the mind, an entire biological system, is the software. A general patch slash update can be pushed down to everyone in a general or highly granular targeted demographic. This could be a patch to put you in any emotional state, say, to suddenly see the light and be a proponent of any ideology, religious belief, have a certain disposition towards certain other people or groups, anything. A patch could be sent to everyone that fixes and prevents cancer this basically already exists. Likewise you could be given cancer or a heart attack, stroke, or otherwise killed instantly. You could be knocked out while driving around a curve. An aside, I was told by a handler one time that it's not a healthcare system we have but rather wildlife management. Many targeted individuals experience street theater slash gang stalking. They are ignorant of what is actually happening to them. They believe hundreds of random strangers, or regular supernumeraries like the mailman, around them every day, are secretly paid by the government or other entities to mess with them. How it actually works is that live operators monitor them remotely and simply control anyone around them. Reference the scene in the movie Control Factor with the waitress. Humans are taken over that easily. Instantaneous communication with synthetic telepathy how it works. This also can apply to gangs talking applications. It's actually faster than instant. The operators, and possibly you mentally depending how things are configured, exist in a time-space bubble outside of our linear time. This gives the operators time to put together any kind of information to send you. Quantum jumping, teleportation, used in alien abductions works the same way. Via the electromagnetic nanotech topologies the subject can be in essence ported to a lab, tested, fixed, brainwashed, raped, messed with, then sent back intact as they were or altered and never know anything at all happened unless the operators choose to leave them with a screen memory. Clones of course can be made and used in conjunction with this. The weather is almost totally controlled. It can be micro-controlled. Lightning and thunder can be directed. Wind can be created and blown on anyone, strong or a soft breeze. A voice can be put in it. TIs familiar with sensory type auditory communication can understand this. Even sunlight and darkness in your room, believe it or not. They can simulate shooting stars. They can generate sounds of gunfire. Animals of course can be easily totally controlled. Cats, dogs etc. can be used as spy devices but obviously any human can too without knowing it. Birds can be commandeered and flown right over and around you, peck on your window etc. Worst of all are the extreme evil science projects that are being done by Navy and other military industrial medical complex black ops elements to dissolve the population and try and control the heavens. Reference Soul Catcher Technology Nobody would have believed the Nazis were doing the things they were doing. Same principle. They've ripped off ineffable spiritual energies from various people who are or were highly spiritual and can pump these cloned frequencies into people in church services. Likewise they can totally kill spirituality in naturally spiritual people. They can also of course whisper messages into the minds, auditory channel, of anyone. 
they can and will stop all organic, natural dreams in the entire population and instead pump in synthetic dreams and nightmares. Anyone reading this can have their opinion of it totally changed to think it's all BS, whether they are currently under RNM or not. Remember within five minutes anyone can be an open access target. Any decision in business, government, finance etc. can be instantly or slowly totally controlled and changed. Massive debts can be forgiven and even forgotten about with the creditor walking away cheerful. Laws of supply and demand, how are gold and silver now, are meaningless if and when need be. It's all a matter of perspective, is it not? What an amazing economy to say nothing of other global theater. When we chat about participants in staged events like the Boston Marathon, shootings etc. we say they didn't know, there was something. It was something, something happened but I can't remember, they didn't know. We have a term for a human who's been made into a hybrid, altered, robotoid like every single congressman slash senator, the president etc etc. We say they are Mugu Gai Pan. If they only knew that they're immortal. Laboratory, human factory products now. How does the world work in 2013? More. I should clarify that it takes five minutes to first identify and lock in on a person's location and then take them over. Everyone of course is already stored in government databases and can easily be located and tracked if they are of interest. Once an agency decides to check you out then you can be instantly accessed from then on, by them and affiliated groups. They can also use you as a spying slash reporting mechanism to automatically feed info from your own mind and what you see around you and others back to them. They can then expand a people network for others like you, who you associate with, that may have interest. As I said, they can actually teleport you to a lab and do intensive interrogations and studies as well over the course extended time in another synthetic time-space dimension, take and use your DNA, spiritual properties, use you for breeding, do surgeries on you to enhance you or harm you etc. Obviously they can train you in anything, brainwash you deeply and powerfully and use you for staged state-sponsored terrorism, as an actor at the scene, as the perpetrator, and of course coordinate and choreograph the entire event. They'll do this to cops and even other military contractor personnel involved as well. Select units slash people get super soldier Mugugai Pan cybernetic enhancements and are outfitted for remote medical treatments on the spot via remotely delivered nanobiotechnology. The entire country and pretty much world is now under this system. Virtually the entire population is oblivious. Magnus Olsen is one of the few outsiders who has a clue about this. Inside military slash government personnel who are in the program are sworn to secrecy and are totally tracked. Most of the lower level personnel are probably under remote neural monitoring, RNM, for this reason so if they even have serious thoughts about talking etc. they can be identified as a threat and prevented. That's why you never hear about this from the inside. As a civilian resource I have unusual freedom in this regard as I'm not sworn to any oath, however nobody would ever believe me except for insiders and some TIs. At some point, maybe now, one individual will be able to issue commands instantly via their thoughts over the system to do X, Y or Z to any other person at any time. You can use your imagination, they could take them over or have them commandeered by another resource at their base slash office who takes them over and makes them do as they want, business decision, money, sex, whatever. I am pretty sure my main controllers either have this ability or close to it. They may require some kind of small, portable security device, but that's all. Imagine the possibilities inside a casino, or controlling a football player in the Super Bowl or a UFC fighter's muscles or brain, or a business competitor's decisions. I was always afraid to even think about it much. It's a system of total subjugation and slavery over the masses by those with this technology. I also forgot to mention satellites are part of the overall networking hardware. Brought to you by Don and four other the United States Navy Special Operations Officers. From the, the United States Navy, Special Warfare Operations Disclosure on Classified Operations, Technologies, and Applications. Being used against Americans. Mind control, time travel, timeline alterations, soul theft, plundering the heavens spiritual realms, genocide of the human species. Second release, January 13, 2014. This document is being published per the instructions of commanders of a Navy Special Warfare Operations Group. It expands further on the topics described in the title which were mentioned in summary in an earlier document released on Christmas Day 2013. All of this information is published entirely at the direction of Don and Tim, real names, senior commanders of the Navy Special Ops slash SEAL, Black Ops, group which is conducting operations in the United States at this time. 
Tim is in Marietta, GA, and is a SEAL Team Lead Commander. Introduction which may be a helpful guide for the American public to comprehend the platform of advanced technologies their government has and is using against them. Consider skipping this section and going straight to synthetic dimensions. The below italicized text is just a backdrop. The author is not a Christian, however, the best way to introduce the topics to the public in a big picture way they can more easily comprehend is to provide Christian concepts regarding Lucifer aka the Antichrist and Revelations as a backdrop. If the Antichrist were already here or on his way to power in the form of a human being, and if it were true there already exists an evil network of government slash military slash industry complexes, could it not be that hell might be something that is completely built by and implemented by man himself? Could he not be in a prison already which he has myopically built around himself? The only theme I'll suggest here is that the devil is a lower astral plane deity who essentially overlords humans as a type of plantation farm animal slash slave. He, at best, surreptitiously meets bare minimum compliance with cosmic law in letting more like steering humans into their own demise, which will be total extinction with total harvesting of their most valuable properties, their souls, with full rights of ownership going to him. I use my own specific definition of the word Luciferianism to refer to the entire project being carried out by the military-industrial medical complex the transhumanist project which can be inferred in this document. Put another way, this ad hoc definition of Luciferianism is man trying to become God by killing off everything human and divine, and in the process, stealing the core properties of human soul, spirit, and mind and scientifically, fraudulently, trying to use them as well as back-engineer them, unwittingly and ultimately for the benefit of the devil, if you will. The point in this summary introduction is just to a, provide a backdrop to help understand the big picture on advanced subjects that at first glance will strike many readers as just science fiction they are not. B. Understand the concepts of a living real and literal hell that fits with a common Christian theme, and understand that the people running these black ops projects are Luciferians despite what they may identify themselves as outwardly. They know what they do. I will put the subject of extraterrestrials to rest right now. There are real ads, interdimensional beings, celestial beings, and demons. Very few humans know anything about this. However, greys, reptilians and Nordics as reported by 90 plus percent of alien abductees are totally fake. They exist only as holograms in person, if even that, and most commonly, as screen memories, in the mind of the military slash government mind control lab rat abductee, victim. Moreover, these types of fake aliens are more commonly appearing to regular targeted individuals. They're simply holograms used in the torture process to make the subject appear insane. Advanced New World Order technology does not come from aliens and it never has. The entire alien theme is a very well-crafted enigmatic hoax used as a cover story for NSA-based abduction and human effects. Technology Have higher intelligences played a hand in human sciences and events? Yes in my opinion. If you are atheist or agnostic that's fine, makes no difference. The point is there are no real greys or reptilians working in government labs. For clarification, in this document the terms controller, handler, operator, and agent are synonymous. Synthetic dimensions, hell. The secret military complex has created and uses what amounts to synthetic dimensions. They use these in quantum jumping and in other operations. Refer to Don's first document on this if you need. What is a synthetic dimension? A man-made separate time-space bubble outside of our linear time. Through quantum jumping a person, S, can be teleported to a location such as a laboratory, held for X amount of time and then returned instantly back to where they were taken from with zero lag in our time. State-of-the-art remote neural monitoring and synthetic telepathy operations take place in a synthetic dimension too in that a separate time-space is used which is typically 2 to 5 minutes ahead of what the subject, S, experience as normal linear time. We are actually in a synthetic dimension right now in a sense, post-2012. That is another story though that will lose too many readers. I'll just say that the entire cosmos and all divine, benevolent, ascension, energies are being closed off via the geoengineering programs. Below Cation, when a subject is shown simultaneous real-time video of themselves in a synthetic dimension they are experiencing Below Cation. They are typically shown this in their own mind or consciousness that is in their mind's eye. All they have to do is close their eyes and they can see the version of themselves in the other dimension doing whatever they happen to be doing. This is only, of course, if the military slash government operator decides to show it to them. I've experienced this a number of times before and it can be very creepy. They can show you being abused or in a situation where you are about to be, for instance, as well as showing you real-time video of others. 
When a subject is teleported to a synthetic dimension anything can be done to them there by the personnel working in it. Thus the operators get to play God. They can commit every type of personal crime you can think of against the subject. They can do any kind of study, interrogation, medical operation. Anything, any activity good and slash or bad. The subject can exist in the time-space bubble indefinitely. One scenario when the perpetrators do this is when they make a major new version of the subject for any number of reasons. The inside nickname for this is Mugugai Pan. I'd see a picture or video of Obama, or any of the synthetic puppets, giving a speech and a controller would say he's Mugugai Pan. Adepts who can see auras can usually spot something funny about a remanufactured human. One reason for a major new version of a subject is to do massive trauma erasing or reprogramming to restore to the real you a very blank, placid mind and consciousness a very pleasant, functional lobotomy. They can deeply, powerfully filter or hinder recall of traumatic memories through advanced neuroscience. Another reason is if they want to archive a specific version of you for the future for any number of reasons. Exactly like backing up a hard drive. You want certain restore points. They may want the original version of you which they will always first make. You'd be lucky to get this restored back and get out of the program. But say you had some kind of accident or were used for a terrible Manchurian candidate murder. They could restore to you a version of your total mindset slash consciousness slash emotional memory structure of AU from way before, or perhaps just a day or so before. So while you may have a memory of the act, there'd be no emotional pain and trauma etc., it would be as if it were hypothetical, like something someone else did. As far as just the memory itself, they can make that very faded and instill in you through deep hypnosis and other methods, very little desire to even delve into it. It was just something that happened. Something is a keyword they use often to describe a subject's understanding, or absolute lack of, an event or reason for why they are doing something. It was something, something happened. I don't know, there was something, it was something then the subject just dismissed it. It was just something. Think you're going to heaven? The Luciferians want to be able to trap the souls of people in a synthetic dimension. Let's forget about the concept of an oversoul, something truly cosmic and untouchable, for a minute. They can, at the least, seriously mess with your soul extensions or soul-related energies by keeping you trapped in another dimension. Of course, they can inflict hellish experiences on you when they trap you there. As far as I know there may be several ways they can keep you indefinitely. One can be in a coma as a clone. Another can be in some kind of holographic form, at least in part. They can also just keep the actual living version of you there, keeping you alive and healthy and youthful. One caveat they have in their artificial empire is that it's all run on electricity. So when they use the word eternal actually that only applies as long as the power is on. The spiritual realms. Think about it. This is the last frontier. You can only go so far in the 3D world. The human body is how much different than any other mammals? More intelligent transhumanist elements in the government have probably realized some time ago that humans per se were probably at the end of their collective life cycle in a way. Technology is surpassing the third dimension. The physical body is a clunky 3D vessel. Where did humans come from? Where do they go when they die? Just like the Human Genome Project and the Brain Mapping Project, already done the Obama Initiative is just a front for slowly disclosing what's already been done. The people who run the world and their breakaway civilization have created a spiritual realm project to research, harness and exploit everything possible with the hereafter that is to conquer it and control it. The Navy is interested in using the soul energies of others to travel to heaven and slash or other spiritual realms. They study this intensely. They use star seeds to communicate with the dead. They have indeed successfully stolen very graphic, real celestial visions associated with angelic realms from spiritual people. I do mean stolen. They can take these and store them and prevent the subject from ever accessing them again in a spiritual way. They can despiritualize an individual as hard as this may be to believe. In this respect alone they certainly can steal one's soul. Think about stories related from near-death experiences, and e, stories of angels, guardian angels et.al. In fact, this particular navy group will use a highly spiritual subject to communicate with a guardian angel and ask them to intercede in certain affairs on their behalf, now and in the future in a ridiculously structured fake benevolent format. The thing is, the subject isn't doing this by their own free will. They didn't drive to a military laboratory slash hospital, walk inside, sign papers and then proceed to be experimented on. They are abducted in a fashion that you'd see in the plethora of sci-fi movies that do this stuff, and are totally mind-controlled directed to do it. 
scientists and doctors working with this Navy Special Operations Group, will perform actual NDEs on a subject, crossing them over to the other side and monitor their soul biospiritual feedback and interact with the subject, asking them who and what they see etc. They will have used quantum jumping, or maybe clones, to bring close family members or friends to the hospital slash lab and have them standing around the bed of the subject. They will be directed to comfort the subject while they are in a real or simulated death. I was told that they really do kill you to pull this off but they bring you back. The subject's family members will ask the subject to talk to grandpa for example or maybe a famous historical figure and try to impart information to them if some kind of time travel or timeline alteration operation is being done. The subject's actual movement across time space is actually visible and tracked by the team. It is extremely eerie. It looks like an endless sea of white with the subject taking huge leaps. The subject will wake up, be brought back, extremely disoriented and agitated, flipped out. More than one subject can also be used in tandem with them. The subject may retain more than a screen memory, they can actually remember the event and seeing other subjects who were sent across time with them. The experience is almost like a race where you are competing with the other subject. It is extremely scary. It's what you would think death would be like in the absence of any spiritual component, just a kind of dumb, helpless consciousness utterly lost in a sick void. They nicknamed this the bunny hop. I mentioned a sea of white. It's not the bright white light associated with passing over. It's a troubling static-like type of white for lack of a better description. The overall objective of NDE missions, aside from studies, is to alter timelines. This may also touch on use of the subject in future operations such as in world wars and other major catastrophes. Where extreme Hail Mary efforts to perform whatever tasks may be needed, including operations in post-apocalyptic settings. Example, in the aftermath of a nuclear war. Also, they said they are close in their synthetic timelines to being able to access people from organic timelines. I don't know if that's actually true or not but it's a goal. I know they are confident and ambitious. What else can they use a psychic subject for? They can use their properties to try to provide a way to retroactively rescue someone in a car crash so they wake up in a room full of friends or something similar instead of ending up in a hospital or dead. Equals Topsy Turvy This is an internal term used by this Navy Special Ops group for when they take someone, meaning quantum jump them to their place. Their place is the hospital slash lab they are working out of. They can do this to anyone anytime. They remotely force the subject to take a deep breath and when they exhale they are transported. Let's return to the use of Luciferian slash synthetic dimensions to archive human energies such as minds and souls. It's theoretically possible for millions of people to be topsy-turvy D in one fell swoop or at stages, having their souls, or spiritual essences, as well as all energies that is divic slash auric body, mind slash consciousness and, of course, their overall biological body down to every cell, taken. The main thing to consider here though is heisting of the soul and mind. When they do this they call you a new one or nobody, meaning the you sitting on your couch are newly made and no longer spiritual but rather a type of soul less synthetic. They have the spiritual, sentient version of you at their facility. Remember the phrase the devil wants your soul? This may have already been done to many, many Americans and others around the world. Regardless of the current count, I can promise it will be done in total and you will have no idea it's happened. The elementary principles for how it's done were covered in the first document. Basically you are all computers on a wireless network called Earth, and via satellites, harp, and elf waves anyone, a part of anyone, X, soul and mind, can be snatched easily and stored in a government lab slash facility. Humans are full of nanobots which collectively assemble and interoperate to make the human a potential robot. What happens next? Can they swap souls slash spiritual energies, personalities, mental acuities, and abilities? Can they render masses of people voided vessels and endow themselves with the unique riches they've stolen from the public? Can they dump negative, black energies back into the general public? Worse, what will they do with the archived you, your soul in their Luciferian dimensions? They can send you off, archive you, in a state of bliss or likewise in a state of suffering, extreme misery, if they wish. It's so easy. I think we've just defined a synthetic version of heaven and hell. I can tell you the people doing this are evil. I wouldn't count on heaven. There are some researchers who are learning more about satanic super soldiers as they call us, they talk about the other place as a kind of other heaven slash hell. What they are talking about is a government slash military synthetic dimension but don't know it. By the way, this is where fake alien abductees are taken. 
Alien abductees in the majority of cases, especially involving greys, reptilians, and Nordics are just mind control, lab rat victims who have a screen memory as a clever red herring cover story stuck in their minds. Equals another point, they can create multiple instances of you in a shared space-time. This Navy Special Ops group rapes a lot of women abductees. They have full access and nothing is provable. They can pull almost anyone they want. Anyone who talks publicly about it, if they even know, is labeled as mentally ill. As mentioned in the first document, all 315 million Americans are effectively targeted individuals. They're just clueless sheep. They live in an electromagnetic concentration camp. Everyone on the planet is already configured and uniquely identified by their DNA as an antenna. You are defenseless. Equals FYI, most NWO special ops military personnel who have access to human effects systems are remanufactured with cybernetics and get state-of-the-art medical upgrades etc. Note, these are Luciferians, whether they identify themselves as such or not, not regular army, navy, marines, air force or any special ops units thereof. I'm talking specifically about deep NWO. Black 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 ops who function more like paramilitary death squad secret police. That's the truth. Don't just visualize some Darth Vader looking guy with an M16. They usually dress in street clothes and business suits a lot. Most nasty combat work can slash will be done from behind a computer now. Will bits and pieces of cybernetic and DNA enhancements be pushed down unknowingly to certain regular military who have a high enough value at some point, maybe now? You bet. The Luciferian slash transhumanist military police who are remanufactured, like me, can be seen exactly like Agent Smith of the Matrix movie series. That's on the money. Well, Don emphasized talking about mind control. On to that. Mind control and total control of human subjects. Refer to the first document for basics on this. I have to state again this information comes from my experience, things I've learned under Don, the director of the MK Ultra program I'm trapped in, as well as the other top controllers. I did not want to publish any of this. It's done effectively under his direction. How to tell when you are being taken over by remote control. One being made to yawn or have a sudden strong sneeze. Two the subject may find themselves rubbing their eyes. Three they may become suddenly very drowsy. They could also slowly subtly become drowsy. A good example is if they are on their way home. When they get to their neighborhood they may then start getting tired and almost feeling like you do when you awake from a nice deep sleep. The idea of sleep may be appealing and their body yearns for it. For the subject will likely feel kind of silly, clownish. At first they may feel puzzled. They will suddenly see things from a different perspective, have a change of mind on a matter, come to see and sympathize with someone else's point of view, even if it's profoundly different and it's someone they hate. The mind control operator can go on to push thoughts and feelings onto the subject or steer them in a particular direction on something. 5. They may go on to do something really irrational, deciding they need to show someone what they know. They need to show someone. That's all they know. These are just insider terms describing the dumbed down robotic state of the subject. It doesn't matter if the subject has an IQ of 160. A controller directs his thoughts and emotions over theirs replaces them totally and directs them absolutely, totally, and silently in perfect stealth. To the controller they look like total idiots. It's amazing and hysterical. Don told me to publish this. I'm not a fool. I did not want to do this. I did everything within my power to get out of this. I'm publishing this document against my will. I'm actually being tortured into it. If the controller, S, decide the subject should be sedated or heavily neurologically altered for the day, they may wake up from nightly sleep or a nap and be in the state described above where their body still yearns for sleep. They may mistakenly believe that their mind is clear and refreshed because they had a good sleep, however in reality they are partially lobotomized but functional and in a good mood. Again, think of awaking from a good sleep. It's that mood along with an uncluttered but non-thinking head, being empty-headed. A fake world war or natural disaster or meteorite storm. ET invasion etc. could be perpetrated and the entire population could be put in this state and slash or a mixture of any other state including ripped off spiritual, ineffable feelings from star seeds. Undesirables, riff raff, could be killed efficiently and everyone else simply follows the exact directions they are given, they are total robots. That's the plan. FEMA camps and the threat of gun grabs may be real but they serve more realistically as distractions. Guns are a joke. 
Ways to counter electronic mind control New nanobots are often forced into the subject when they are being taken over by a certain agent. If someone is being accessed for the first time this is always the case. This will be done when, as stated above, they are made to yawn or sigh or sneeze or just take a bigger breath than usual and hold it down a tiny bit longer, just a healthy inhale. As stated, often these nanobots are connected to individual agents. Agents can sometimes conflict and one may kick another one out by making the subject sneeze. This could happen between competing agencies on a resource, a politician during a speech for example. Depending on the mind control system you are on, you can create extreme pain in an agent if you crank up very loud discordant noise like squelching static with headphones on and keep your mouth tightly shut and limit your nose breathing to short regular breaths so he can't get out. They can develop workarounds to this glitch but it will still often work for a while. If you suspect you are being or have just been taken over, try to make yourself sneeze. Grab nose with a Kleenex and try to blow as much mucus out as possible. Coughing up phlegm may help. Other ways, if you are already under neurological control, try to get into an intense primal state, especially one of anger. Scream, stomp, punch. Get vicious. Swear. Bring out your meanest side. Physical exercise, especially outdoors, will help. Long drives will help too a lot. You have to shatter the frequencies in and around you. Getting intense will help. Being calm and meditative will only prove helpful if they are laying off you. Then you will reconnect to your sense of self. Synthetic telepathy, remote neural monitoring. If you are being tortured with synthetic telepathy, talk out loud to yourself, not around others though. Also go ahead and talk to the handler, S, talking to you. Ask them what their name is over and over, where they are at etc. Keep doing it. Always return fire with fire, get extremely personal, gross and mean. Ask them the name of their oldest kid or the most recently deceased relative if they are trying to degrade and traumatize you by using your family. Try and divide and conquer. Turn them against their superiors and fellow handlers. Play good cop slash bad cop against them. Every TI who survives is mean and fights back, as far as I know. The nice ones don't make it. Do not sit there in silence letting the electronic Luciferian rats run wild over your brain driving you insane. Call other TIs. Do not talk about the torture to non-TIs unless you want to end up losing friends, family, jobs, and also end up in the psych ward. Keep white noise on, AM radio static is good and can cause a gateway central operator real pain especially if you turn it up loud. Remember the above technique of not letting the nanobot, S, that the main gateway listener agent is connected to, get out. Odds are they are watching you every second. They also see exactly what you see depending on the system you are under, RNM. If so you can watch as much disturbing content of things that will sicken them, but not you. Whatever works. Just desensitize yourself to it and look at it in a casual, frequent, non-premeditative way. Equals BTW, for all Americans, you might as well not be wearing clothes and be inside a building. It's hilarious. These cover stories about the NSA tapping phone lines. It's like Charles Manson admitting to shoplifting. Anyone in the secret police slash military structure can see, hear, experience emotions, everything about you in unreal detail. They can watch your heartbeat, your lungs expand, see you in the bathroom, bedroom, anytime. It's called total target access. Communicating with synthetic telepathy. First, I recommend you do not learn how to internally communicate with this evil, unnatural protocol. They may try to actually teach you to do it. If you do want to, what you do is direct your thoughts into words or images and push them downward, inwardly in your head and further downward as if being stuffed down the back of the throat. The exact opposite of how you talk to people verbally, physically. It takes a few months but you will find yourself learning how to do it. You are developing new neural pathways in doing this. Warning again, learning this may be a huge mistake. You will likely wish you weren't able to communicate with your torturers. I am following orders in publishing this detailed operational information on communicating internally over synthetic telepathy. Dialogue Patterns The brain is split into left and right spheres in the particular Sintel protocol this special ops group uses. When you look down, your head is flooded with either real or fake imposed subconscious thoughts. They are usually negative. One of the first things I was told was that looking down brings on negative thoughts. It does under this system. Asterisk I was also told that this RNM system uses body language like you wouldn't believe. Boy does it. Dialogue occurs either in the left side or right side of your brain or it feels this way. 
It's very clear as it happens. Left side verbiage is always false by default, unless an after phrase of sometimes left is correct is whispered. Same thing for right side except right side equals truth. When you get the sometimes left slash right side is right slash wrong exception message it's usually in regard to something important they are trying to convey to you, a nugget of truth, or tip, they are trying to slip you. You will get tons of disinfo from the handlers if you are a TI of some type, but you can almost always trust the sometimes exception as truth. Left side of head is the standard for superfluous text. If they talk to you a lot it would be impossible for every single word to alternate from right to left, so the left side is the common channel for regular dialogue. Another type of exception is when every single word of an important sentence is all on the left side. When this is done it's the equivalent of the words being in bold text, they are kind of emphasized in a way to indicate that it's meant to all be consolidated on the left side. However, it can still be a false statement. It could also be true too. It's just being packed into the left side entirely. Masking. The agent can mask the words by overlaying them with other words and also by straddling the center line trying to cross back and forth and creating confusion with synonyms and antonyms. Also they can mess with the timing. Almost immediately after saying a word like yes on the left side which would mean no if it were emphasized as a left side word, they can say no which would mean yes. They can also add a touch of confusion as they do this so you can't easily tell which it is. If you slowly replay the sentence and break it down though you can figure it out. Communication can take place via vibrations from any source. They can take place from any consistent sound around you. Crickets chirping on a summer night can be used as a medium to communicate with you. The sound can repeat you're an idiot or dickhead over and over etc., or something positive. The agent also can direct left-right side communication as well by making you chatter your teeth slightly, rubbing or scratching yourself or any object, tapping or rubbing. With your foot, by virtually any tactile or auditory stimuli. Interrogations a subject will be interrogated with a soft, masked voice asking tell me who you are, or similar question. That's how it starts. The word who or what is key. Who told? You, for example. Again they will often mask this other voices and vibration communication running on top of it. Involuntarily, things related to what they are asking will pop up in your mind. Ways to counter, hinder, it. Ask questions back. Apply the Sintel protocol techniques described above if you are game to actually learning this OR already have. If not, talk verbally out loud. Do not try to talk back in your head if you don't know how. Important, you want to ask the question back using a combination of the right-left pattern if using this specific synthetic telepathy protocol. Put a key antonym or negating word on the left side. Example. Right side, who told you to? Left side, shut up. Right about us. Keep repeating this. You can also repeat confusing phrases in a Clinton-esque kind of fashion. In doing this, don't worry about left-right side protocol. Just say it either out loud or internally. Straight out. Examples, I've said that before and so has she. Oh, is that right? You may feel the interrogator trying to pull your words to one side or another. Visualize a deep magnetic pull or star on one side of your brain, feel it saying false false but is it? You never know, maybe there's something on the other side? Wait, there might be something I missed, something going on over there, so it's a kind of ambiguous tug of war. Asterisk revert to this if the interrogator nails you. You never know, that may not be all there is to it. There was something else. Try not to actually think, just get both hemispheres of your brain in a kind of wrestling match. The interrogator component will always try to get you to look down into your left typical eye movement for recalling the past. So try to look to your right. If you feel your inner mental voice starting to answer a question or suddenly visualizing, thinking of a correct response, keep your hand over your mouth or nose. This is body language for lying. Also experiment with rubbing your finger across the cleft between your upper lip and nose, mustache area. You may want to keep your hand over and around your nose and mouth and also dart your eyes around also to act like you are hiding something if they've pulled the truth out of you. I'm far from an expert on this subject but these are tips you can try. Still, it's almost impossible to win. What they are seeking will always come out. Especially if you get paranoid after a while, or just tired etc. They'll get everything they want out of you when you fall asleep anyway. The mind has no firewall. Sorry. One thing though. If the subject is sleep-deprived and suffering from psychological damage slash torture, 
then it's a case of garbage in slash garbage out. The system does not take into account that the subject's mind may be a total wreck with multiple paranoid, coping type double jeopardy type complexes. An aside. There is something called a car bag. What's that? They can control all music in your car. They can also do it anywhere almost. In a grocery or drug store for example. They can play any song or commercial on your car or home radio, or in public. The car bag can also make things move around in your car, for example, an ornament hanging from your rear view mirror can start moving to get your attention. Soul Reflection Soul Querying One of the sickest and biggest violations of God and divinity, of true cosmic law, is the theft and slash or rape of the soul which can be done in real time to any individual via soul catcher technology. The Luciferian controllers can invoke a deep powerful deja vu like experience in you, tapping deep into your soul. When they do this it usually recalls a deep childhood memory, something precious and sacred. It's not private anymore though. A government or black ops military agent can get their filthy hands on it anytime. This may be deep powerful loving memories of family from when you were a child, or of a loved one, including one of your own children. It could be of a dead relative or close friend, perhaps who is now a guardian angel. They did slash do this with me in their operations, having me communicate with a guardian angel, and also trying to map any kind of spiritual communications with deceased relatives and more. They can have the subject in a suit of nanobots, entirely surrounded in a force field. You can see how they can cut you off spiritually if they want, or likewise allow you to have spiritual experiences but capture everything about it, auras, inner voices and images, ineffable feelings etc. Then they study it and back-engineer it, try to replicate it. They copy the frequencies involved to generate fake spiritual experiences in other people as a kind of high and false spiritual awakening. The Luciferian Navy Special Ops controllers can invoke these spiritual soul reflections at very inappropriate times, they can invoke it in you any time they want. Further, they can play your own soul reflections and spiritual experiences that they've stolen from you, back to you. The experience is a very good duplicate but fake. The most precious private, spiritual gifts of life are being stolen totally stolen. Equals they can invoke deep powerful, hurtful memories that touch your soul, at times when you should be joyous. They also weaponize your spiritual experiences that they steal. As I said, they are obviously cataloging humanity's soul essences, spiritual frequencies. They can take combinations of soul frequencies and mentations and emotions, and mix them just like a music producer might do sampling and ripping off riffs from classic hits to put into the next top 40 hit. They plan on using these specially blended frequencies to counter other competing frequencies of enemies. It's unlikely there will be another major war but if there is it will be between frequencies and will use neurological directed energy weapons. Ironically these are banned by international courts and the Geneva Convention but the United States and other countries use them on their own citizens with impunity. Right now a silent holocaust is being waged against many of America's best people. Many people are being tortured to suicide or into mental hospitals. Modern revolutions. Arab Spring, and financial restructuring, remember the terrible imminent collapse of the pig countries that never happened, the imminent financial depression in America that never happened and the Occupy Nothing, as well as the monthly mass shooting or bombing theaters all mind control events. I did not want to publish this. Don has a connection at the NSA that keeps him from getting canned no matter what. Entire SEAL and craft type teams take the fall. Chemtrails. Used for mind control primarily. Applied en masse and locally in operations on super solitors or other program assets, and on the general public in eugenics campaigns and general configuration and maintenance of humans. They can be applied locally to control or modify any number of subjects as well. Really, chemtrails can be seen as firmware that is flash written into humans, biocomputers. These are used with nanotech heavily. Same with HARP. Chem cover slash trails provide the basic media through which myriad operations can be performed on human subjects for bad or good. Franken clouds, fake clouds that just suddenly appear, created out of almost thin air. They have a metallic silver kind of sheen to them. They can rapidly disappear too. The engineers are getting much better at creating natural looking chem cover and blanketing the whole skyscape. For some reason, perhaps just for fun, they like to still do old school style swatch pattern chem trails. Usually, as anyone who isn't blind can see, the sky is just electromagnetic soup, it's gross. This whole topic at this point is so blatantly obvious there's little to really disclose. I was told early on that the diabetes epidemic is caused by people eating drinking out of tin slash aluminum cans. 
the metals in the atmosphere have an effect on the aluminum metal cans that causes diabetes. This is not by design, I was told, and they are working on a fix for it. Black Psychiatry One of the five Navy Special Ops controllers told me how they create horrific lucid nightmares. They put you in a sleepy state or just wait for you to get into one yourself. When you are asleep or just waking up they will do deep sleep state hypnosis. They will start by using the keywords take me back, they will ask you to go back to a certain time in childhood or maybe to another time. Usually I think they start with childhood, probably to re-establish some kind of trust between them, a special friend or parental replacement character they are acting as, and an alter personality. They've programmed into you. During this process they can take you deeper, this is standard hypnosis but with electronic mind control it's much easier and more powerful. It's like going lower in an elevator, deeper, deeper. Then they'll have you start off in a pleasant environment. They will then show you that there are two sides to it. There's a dividing demarcation boundary line. On the other side there are negative things. Then they will turn it into a nightmare where horrible things, situations, and people from the bad side are introduced. You get lured over there and end up in an extremely disturbing situation. Loved ones can be turned into evil, perverted characters. They really like car wrecks. They can create real-time real-to-life lucid situations in your mind that are horrifying. You can be in a car as a child with a parent driving on the highway. The parent starts to fall asleep and you try desperately to wake your mom or dad as they doze off behind the wheel but can't. The car is in the process of crashing into other cars and going off the road and in your mind you are maybe six years old and utterly terrified and helpless. Horrific sex crimes can be done in your mind. They may create a fun sexual dream at first. Then it changes into a nightmare. For TIs who are limited assets in the program that is my lab slash super soldiers, they may create a stick and carrot lesson. They will give you a positive sex dream. Like the strong, lasting impressions in your mind that their artificially induced nightmares have, the positive sex dream can burn into your mind as a good memory even though it was artificial. But then comes the stick. They follow it up with a nightmare to show you there are consequences for undesired behavior, including merely having thoughts, they don't like. Why are these nightmares so horrific? They pull the characters, settings, the entire emotional and mental landscape from the deepest recesses of your own mind and soul. They keep inventing new forms of terror with these psychotronic, lucid nightmares. They can keep you semi-awake and have the nightmare keep going. It can go on for a seemingly long time like this, maybe 5 to 15 minutes, you keep living it in your mind and it's so real. They can have a force field around you to add vibration effects to it. You could relieve a disturbing memory of someone deep in a dark corner of your mind. In the nightmare you might be trying to open a door to escape or be trapped in a maze or trying to hang on to a metal bar on a ski lift car or ferris wheel chair that you've slipped out of. You could be in this life or death struggling situation for, as I said, maybe 15 minutes or more, semi-awake, and you don't know it's a nightmare, you are living it in your mind as if it's real. The nightmares can get so bad for the TI after a while that in order to keep them from cracking a handler will administer some neurological magic they will reprogram the TI's brain to phase out the memory of what just happened and be in an artificial good mood, just a little while after they wake up and learn their lesson. They might make a Mugugai Pan semi-lobotomized happy airhead you, and to boot give you a chiseled physique and shave 5 pounds off you. This is only done if the agency who is using the TI, typically a MyLab, has a vested interest in keeping them alive and functioning for a bit longer, otherwise they'll let the mental damage just fester and compound. Usually after the subject awakes from the nightmare the handler who is on duty is talking to them to really rub it in. As stated, a trick they can do is use a force field around you to add vibrations and other effects. This would be great to simulate an act of violence against the TI. They can create holographic images around the subject as well. They might put a 13-foot reptilian by your bed, standing over you while they pipe a raspy voice into your head. The perpetrators can wake you up in a state of total terror. For example, if you are trying to escape using shielding such as sleeping in a small Faraday cage or your car, you could be awakened with a real 3D sensation of the walls around you actually shaking violently and closing in on you. You could be awoken to a lucid nightmare where you are working in a barn alone, around a large silo of grain and it avalanches on you and buries you alive. Variations of these kinds of freak accident and homicidal nightmares are only limited by the imaginations of the torturer's sadistic minds. These are Luciferians. Many of them are pedophiles. Nearly all of them are rapists. Some may call themselves things like reborn Christians. They're Luciferians and they are the most sadistic, evil psychopaths who have ever existed on this planet. 
Some may be forced to act as torture agents as a form of blackmail but there are core groups that make a long-term profession of it. FYI the concept that the hypnosis subject will not be okay with a command or suggestion they are immorally against subconsciously is not valid under electronically induced hypnosis. They will blindly believe and do whatever they are told. An aside, the new earth. No, this isn't a new Agar's vision of a spiritual renaissance but you hear them using this phrase like a new trend term. It's the new synthetic earth where all matter is part of the global, remotely controlled computerized API, application programming interface. Man's electromagnetic prison with mirages and cloned and fake synthetic frequencies slash energies are all that post-humans experience. This will lose a lot of readers, but cosmic ascension into higher dimensions was real. A small number of people in the power structure know this. It's been blocked out now. The sun's energy is being greatly blocked out under the guise of global warming remediation. I have to reiterate that this document was brought to you entirely by Don, four other Navy Warfare Special Operations Officers and Tim a core SEAL team lead beneath them, who run their version of a Luciferian Soul Catcher project. It was truly SEAL written with them. It appears to me that they blame entire SEAL and private contractor teams for various mismanagement and leaks. They go to fantastic lengths to frame everyone else and apparently have friends in the NSA and intelligence community in high places. This document will have virtually no impact on the public. While it presents a serious leak in some ways, nobody of any importance slash power will read it or believe it. Northcom and overall globalist plans will not be the slightest bit impacted. I was instructed to, actually tortured into, publishing this to create my own death warrant. Anyone who does appreciate this document may thank parties named above. http://justpaste.it/usnavy/sbecialops